Hey, how's it going? I know, I know. Crazy hectic, right? Well, sit back and relax and welcome welcome to the Mom and Pops Fun. Help me welcome my dad and the host of the show, St. Patrick. Welcome, Dad, some sassy, bossy, little Sour Patch Girls. This is episode eight of the Mom and Pop Spot podcast. Today, we'll be discussing girl dads. Today, we have a comedian dad who has had his run at being a girl dad. Please help me welcome the amusing Nick Madrid to the show. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Doing good. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Pleasure. We got a reoccurring guest coming in today. Um, yeah, we're bringing Juan Masters back to the show. Um, and I apologize um, because of the fact that like I had something written. I, I know this happened before. But um, I mean, you have your 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 deal too with the girl dads. So yeah. today's episode is actually going to be about you know girl dads and stuff like that. Um, so I appreciate it. Thank you for being on the show. Sure. How many uh, how many daughters do you have? I've got. Uh, I was father to three, and I got additional two with my new wife. So I got a total of five girls. Wow, <clears throat> ranging from. 18 to 30. It's a lot of excedrin. <laughs> oh, yeah. man, it's good. It's a blessing. Estrogen, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yes, that too. <laughs> and how many, how many girls do you have? For the, for the headaches, right? <laughs> yeah. How many girls do you have? I have three. Okay. When did you guys both become parents? At what ages? I was uh, 20, 27. Okay. 27. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I believe I was like 23. Okay. Those are both pretty good ages and stuff like that. Um, so before we go into the questions, I wanted to ask your thoughts on these situations. Um, being, you know, girl dads, R. Kelly was able to kind of, in a sense, hypnotize these young girls to having their way with their minds and stuff. Um, my question to you is what would you do to get your daughters out of these situations? For me, it's a lot of it's how you ground your children, your foundation. Okay. And I think that at the end of the day, temptation uh, immaturity will always take a, take its toll on children, right? Whether it's drugs, whether it's a sexual environment, but if you can begin as a father to create what's right and what's wrong growing up, uh -huh. it gives them a little bit of something to look as a measurement against. If they don't have that uh, parenthood growing up, then it's only what they know from the streets, right? And if all they know from the streets is sex, drugs, and rock and roll, then and it's very easy for them to just do whatever they feel right. Uh -huh. um, but if they got some sort of uh, of an upbringing with parents who might be a little bit more conventional, right? And talk to them about the birds and the bees, sexual sexuality. Talk to them about what's right and wrong. You know, this is what needs to be done in the progression in life. Then at least they got something to measure it up to. Okay. And then at least that's the opportunity you have that maybe a child that doesn't have that have. So. I think it all starts at first with the parents. Okay. Um, say you had a situation like that where your daughter's like, no, like I'm good. I'm good. What are you, what are you saying to like maybe pull them out of that if they're already in that situation? Well, I think that would never happen to me because um, at the end of the day, I think most of those girls that probably fell into that um, probably didn't have a father figure. Right. You know what I mean? And that's uh -huh. um, very important. They probably, And if they did, you know, the father was probably not either not really in their lives or, um, you know, was probably an abusive or maybe a cheater never came home or whatever the case may be, you know, so, uh -huh. if, you know, they were setting bad examples. So, um, but if I was in that situation, I mean, I don't know, I just, once I get a hold of them, I guess, yeah. then, uh, um, I don't and, know, it's tough. And here's a different situation. Um, a woman <clears throat> I personally know um, was fit for a position at work, uh, at her job, but was given, the position was given to another person. Um, it wasn't disclosed, but employees kind of felt that it was in a sense sexist because of the fact that this position should have been given to her. She was well overqualified. She was really good at it, but it was just given to someone else. Um, at, as fathers, what's your advice to them, you know, in regards to that situation? Nothing's guaranteed. Uh -huh. I mean, that's the first rule of thumb where I tell my kids, I mean, you can be the best athlete yeah. in your team. And nothing's guaranteed. You can be the best mother and father right ain't nothing's guaranteed that your kids are gonna grow up to be ideal citizens you can have you can be you know educated articulate uh a great upbringing uh social friends everything and still end up the children can end up being in the gutter mm -hmm. 
prostitutes, drug dealers, gang members, you know, bank robbers, whatever. So when it comes to a, a, a job opportunity, I've got five girls and they're all very intelligent, you know, in their own manner, in their own way. They have different specialties in life. But even then I can say, you know what, if you didn't get the job, that may be the situation. Right. That's why they did it. It could be that you might be an attractive, you might have an attractive daughter and the supervisor is more of a flirtatious boss. And uh -huh. I'll give you this position if, you know, I have this sort of, you know, quid pro quo. But in, at the end of the day, that doesn't mean that you're going to get the job. These guys using you. Yeah. And in a day, in a, in a situation where um, you're up, you're applying for a a progression in in your position at work to move up, just because you're the most qualified doesn't mean you're you're the one that's going to be picked. Right. I mean, it's it, nothing. Nothing in life is guaranteed. Absolutely. Did you want to add anything in regards to that? Yeah, I know that's um, a conversation I have with my daughters. You know, they play sports and they do other things like that, and um, so like I know I, I preach to them like, look. Like you said, you know, nothing's guaranteed and, um, you know, you're not, um, <clears throat> what am I trying to say here? Like, like just because, you know, like you could be, like you said, you know, you could be the best player this and that, but, um, at the end of the day, like you, you have to be the right fit and right. maybe, maybe they weren't, maybe her personality energy or something wasn't right for the person. So it's like, you know, sometimes, you know, it might be a good thing, you know, they might go somewhere else and end up being in a better <coughs> position than they were going to be there. So, yeah, you know, I always just keep, keep them like, you know, like, Hey, okay it yeah. might, it's probably a better opportunity and you know i'm a firm believer and things happen for a reason maybe that didn't work out for her and it's okay right um and then what is your guys definition of daddy issues daddy issues yeah in refer in reference to the father or to the daughter to the daughter <clears throat> so a girl can be dating a guy right and the guy um is not responsible immature does not pay his bills does not treat his treat her and she'll her her measurement is gonna usually be how my dad treated my mom, right? Exactly. In reference to a relationship, uh -huh. in reference to how he he is supportive on a financial responsibility aspect. Oh, my dad went to work all the time. You're not working. Yeah, you know you're lazy. Look at my dad, and and the crutch from the guys that would say that, oh, you got daddy issues, is not so much that she had daddy's issues. She just basically brought you comparison that you don't like, mm -hmm. and so now. You fight back with a defensive way and say, hey, um, you must have daddy issues, man, because you're always comparing me to your dad. And like I said earlier, you always got to have something to compare to because when you don't have something to compare to, right. then then you compare it to what you know. And if you don't know much, then mm -hmm. there's not much to lean on. Okay. Yeah, yeah you know, as as males, um, we have to set that, that example, you know, to them. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, it's like that's something I feel I do is like, you know, I, I – open the doors for, for my daughters. You know, they know if we're walking into the mall or whatever. Right. And, you know, they usually walk in front of me and they wait at the door for me to go open for them. And okay. if they try to open it, you know, and they go in, yeah. and they get back out, yeah. you know, and then, you know, so Gotta same thing, car high. doors, you know, right. all that stuff. And, and I don't even just do it for them. Like if I see, you know, like a, like I'm walking in somewhere and I see like a female kind of straggling behind, I'll wait there for a couple extra seconds, let them walk in. And, um, you know, that stuff just for my daughters to see and, you know, setting that example and setting that tone that that's, that's what their expectations are going to be, you know, because we all tend to gravitate to um, to what's normal and what we seen growing up and whatnot, right. you know. So, you know, if you're setting that example out the gate, that's what they're going to expect because that's what their normal is. And so hopefully, you know, that's something they recognize, like, look, this dude's not doing this and that. And then maybe they might try to educate him on it. Like, look, you know, my dad used to always open the door and I expect the same thing. And if they can't do it, then maybe they need to go somewhere else. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, and then before we get into the question portion of it, we're going to um, go into a commercial break. Uh, so we, we'll be right back. Habari Entertainment Films present There's Only One Name for News with Damon and Aisha. Habari Live Podcast. Habari Entertainment. A race against time. On a quest for glory.
Habari News Weekly, HabariEntertainment.com. Catch us for more. Visit us, HabariEntertainment.com. What is it like having having daughters? Well, <clears throat> I've had I've had three of my girls before I got married, yeah. and um, I had a boy. He passed away, so I never were able was able to to give you an example of the difference because even though he was born, he wasn't. I didn't get a chance to raise him and and respond to whatever situations a boy would have. Yeah, but being a father to a girl. Uh, to multiple girls in a household of girls, um, it's the understanding that there's a lot of estrogen going on, uh-huh. whether they're young or old. Um, my girls were always involved in school extracurricular activities, usually banned. Right. And so, um, as 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 a female, and I'm only speaking based on what I know because I'm not a female. Most women don't want you to disappoint them by not showing up. Uh huh. So my girls, in spite of all the hours I would work at work, yeah, they had a band performance where I had to come after work, go into the stands and, and support them, travel with them to their shows that they had. Uh, women a little bit more demanding, uh-huh. and I speak as a, as a man in general, yeah, not knowing what a woman absolutely knows. I mean, who knows what the hell women think, anyways, right? Right. <laughs> so I mean, it comes down to little girls, two girls. I, I've seen my girls respond in ways like, "Well, daddy." Did this is, but honey, I did all this other stuff. Uh-huh. So, I mean, it's 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 a, it's a matter of, of of estrogen and hormones and female traits that you don't understand. You might have one daughter, you think you you've, you've conquered it, and you don't, because your next daughter could have a totally different personality. Okay, and then the third one can have a third personality. Yeah, and now I've got five through marriage, and each one have a different personality. And how they respond to you, how they react to you, how they communicate back to you, uh-huh. um, whether it's religion, whether it's sexuality, whether it's parenting, whether it's, it's their viewpoint on life in general. Okay. You know, I'm 58 years old and I'm still not understanding women. Yeah. I just kind of go along for the ride, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's different. Like he said, you know, they all, like me, I have three 14-year-old daughters, right. you know, and um, so it's. It's tough, and especially like you said, you know, they all have different personalities. So I have to approach all of them slightly different. You know, I have uh-huh. to, and that's something that's taken me a long time. You know, to to realize is that you know I I have to be a, almost a different person, right? And take a different approach the way I ask them, tell them, you know, yeah. stuff like that. That um, so you got three fourteen year olds? Yeah, you got triplets, <laughs> kind of. Oh wow! I had yeah. twins, and then another daughter that within a year. Wow, okay, yeah, yeah. within months. <laughs> Um, are you both, are you, um, afraid that your girls are going to find men as yourselves? Um, my oldest is married and she's married to a military person. I was in the military. Um, but his personality is far from what my personality is. So I guess sometimes as a father, you look at kids because I can tell you many times when my daughters brought over a boyfriend that they were dating and. You just naturally look at that child that if your daughter likes this person or if they're dating them or if they're in love, as they say, when they're teenagers, is there something about them that reminds my daughter of me yeah. and what they see in their boyfriends? And I don't think I've ever seen that in any of them. Okay. Now, I would say that um, each one had a different characteristic. Yeah. One, one of my daughter's boyfriends likes sports, like the Cowboys, like I do. So she associates really well with them. Yeah. The other one, uh, she had a boyfriend she... Uh, he was a producer, music producer. So she was into music. I've been into music. You know, we've yeah. had a music studio in our house. Uh, my oldest one is in military. So I was in the military. And so I, I've never seen that resemblance. Right. You know, but is it on their perspective? They're probably thinking, am I looking for everything that reminds me of my dad? Or maybe one or two items that remind yeah. me of my dad to kind of keep me grounded. Okay. Because I think at the end of the day, a child will look for something that keeps them grounded on the floor. Yeah. Whether they have success or not, whether they're going through failures or not, because if they're going through failures, my dad taught me how to how to respond to things like this so that I don't get depressed, so that I don't go out the deep end. Whereas if I have a lot of success, my dad has always said, keep yourself grounded because today right. you're a star, tomorrow you're not. 
you know, in, in baseball, they always say you're only as good as your last pitch. Uh-huh. You know, one pitch could be a strike. The next pitch could be a grand slam home run to the team. Right. And so I'm thinking that, yeah, no, you know. Yeah. So I, I think that they, it's their own perspective. They're all a little bit different than that. Okay. What fears do you both have as girl dads? Uh, my fear is that they, um, they'll end up in a bad relationship and right. um, they're afraid to tell me. Okay. And then, um, and that's something I try to talk to them about. Like, look, if, if you, if there's something wrong, you get in trouble, you're better off telling me right away than having, you know, the problem become bigger because, you know, you we keep putting it off and yeah. then, you know, it's just like, like anything, you know, like anything you put off just ends up turning into something bigger than it, than it should have been. So, right. Um, that's kind of like what, what scares me. And, um, also depending on the situation, what my reaction may be to it. So. Yeah. I think that's my biggest fear. I think, um, I grew up in a bad environment with my mom and dad and my dad was very abusive. Um, I always promised myself growing up, I would never touch my wife. I never lay a hand on her uh-huh. in a violent way. And so I think I'm afraid of my reaction that if someone was to lay a finger on my daughter, how I would respond to that physically. Yeah. I mean, emotionally and legally, I know how I would respond to that. Right. I mean, most parents would, you know, I'm going to call the police. I'm going to do this, report you to your boss or whatever the case. My fear is the unknown, how I would physically respond to somebody touching my daughters. Right. Because there's a point in time where you, you even as, as a human being, you can break away from your moral compass and you get blinded on by whatever's going on and then you respond to it in a way you would never thought you'd respond right. i mean you see that all the time in crime stories where somebody happens and the person is talking about the guy who's being charged with body i never thought he's such a nice man yeah i mean he could have been a nice man something got him to, to cross yeah, that yeah. line so my biggest fear how will i respond if somebody ever touches my daughters yeah I'm afraid to think that it would probably be in a very bad way. Yeah. I'm hoping that's not the case. And, you know, I try to to be that person, the very commanding, dominating figure when I meet these guys. Right. So they know I don't even have to go to that step because I'm never going to do that because I know this this wrath over here will come get me. Yeah. Absolutely. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I would hope morally that I wouldn't do that. Yeah. To say I can promise you a guarantee hundred percent I wouldn't strangle the person. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I hope I would, but I can guarantee you that. Right. And I hope I don't get to that situation. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because another day, you know, like they say, like, you know, like a, a crime of passion or something like that, where it's just like, you know, in the moment, it's just something that you almost can't control depending on, you know, how depending on how bad the situation is. And right. You know, where you just see red and you just go into terminator mode and um, you know, just everything's out the window. And, yeah. logic um everything so it's, yeah when i was thinking of more of a i i was totally off i was wrong because when i was thinking of uh the fears of a girl dad i'm thinking about like you know how would you guys react if you found one of your daughters dancing for money or in the adult industry you can say it well you understand times have changed right from the 40s and 50s yeah to now Sexuality has changed. Sexuality has become a more open conversation, not only within married couples, but within married, but within parents and their children. Uh-huh. The old days, it was, well, I'm afraid to talk to my kids about the birds and the bees. Uh-huh. Now, parents are talking to the kids about sexuality and about oral sex and anal sex and what they may find out. And they're not necessarily saying you shouldn't do that, but be careful what you do and who you do it with right? for the sake of whatever disease is because of pregnancy, uh, sexual ex- exploitation, uh-huh. you know. Uh, um, so I'm thinking that for me, if, if I was to see my daughter in a strip bar, I mean, first of all, at my age, I probably wouldn't go to the strip bar. Yeah. But if I was to be at a strip bar and I see my daughter, first of all, I would be disappointed not because I saw her, I'd be disappointed because she didn't talk to me first and said, Dad, That's I'm right dancing. I'm yeah. You know, so if she says, Dad, I'm dancing. First of all, if my da- daughter's dancing at a strip bar and I go to strip bars or I'm going to a men's junket for business, yeah. I am not going to go to that strip bar. Right. How would I feel about it? Well, it's a matter of sexuality. What is the purpose of you doing? Are you doing it to express your sexuality where you feel comfortable in your own body? Uh-huh. Okay. And if you feel like 
this is a way to express sexuality without having to go to the next level, then everybody has to make that decision. Yeah. The father can't make the decision yeah. because he can't say, well, this is how it should be. Well, I mean, this is how I grew up. Yeah. You grew up in a different environment, man. You know, millennials are a whole, a whole different ball game. Yeah. You know, they have cell phones and, and software and, you know, weekend trips to Bermuda. You know, my age, we didn't have phones, period. We had a regular landline. We had phone books. Yeah. If I wanted information to get to this place today, what's the, what's the address? Let me find the phone book. And then you would pull out a paper map. So times yeah. have changed. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think I would be more in shock if they didn't tell me as opposed to me being upset about it. Okay. Um, because when I think about it, does it make it any better versus the OnlyFans or even selling, you know, now they have this new thing where you can sell coffee <coughs> in a bikini. Does that make it better? None of it does. I think at the end of the day, it's, um, you almost have to be disappointed in yourself because, you know, you weren't maybe a good enough father to you know, keep them from, from going down that path. And yeah, but it's just one of those things, I guess, you know, like if they, um, you know, like the bikini thing at a coffee shop, that might not be too bad, but you know, um, at the end of the day, like, you know, it's about making also women feel comfortable with themselves, you know, and right. confident. And yeah. I think that's something I think a lot of maybe females lack is like that confidence. And if, you know, um, I guess my stuff. fear, you know, when I think about that is just the, the way that they would be in a sense exposing themselves to like the perverts and stuff, the weirdos and they're not, they don't have that accessibility. Uh, you can call it, you can color it any way you want to. Right. I mean, you, if you have a beat up station wagon parked up front, you can color it purple, put rims on it. You can put a sound system, uh -huh. but if, if it is a beat up station wagon, it's a beat up station wagon. I mean, Sarah Palin one time said a long time ago in the convention, the, the Republican convention, she says, you can put a lipstick on a pig, but it's yeah. still a pig. Uh -huh. So, I mean, however you want to dress it up, yeah, it's still a pig. Uh -huh. So, however you want to try to say, well, I'm, Dad, I'm not stripping. I mean, I'm not, I'm not hooking. I'm not on the street prostituting myself. I am stripping for money. Yeah. Where there's people that can protect me. Or better yet, no one's touching me, but they're seeing my body over webcam. Yeah. Or no one is uh, forcing me to do anything, but they're asking me because they pay me. I would pay you whatever monetary program they have on those type of things yeah. to to do this. Well, at the end of the day, it's still a situation, a sexual situation. Yeah. Is it conducive for you to become a better person? Uh -huh. Now, to say some people have sexual issues, well... I mean, they have sexual addiction classes, right? Right. So that being the case, maybe there are kids out there, you know, either kids that go to the strip bars and the nude bars and the peep shows and they're addicted to it. And, you know, the guys and they go there to masturbate or whatever else. And then you have girls who go strip, you know, or they go an adult bookstore or they're working at a porn shop or if they're working at a strip, at a strip bar or for themselves. Everybody might have their own. They might enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And here's the reality. If if you think there's nothing wrong, because it's not somebody else's life, it's your own life. Yeah. If you think, well, what I'm doing is fine with me because my sexuality is this, my religion or my lack of religion says I can do whatever I want to. If that makes you at peace, by all means, man, be yeah. at peace. I've never had a problem. Would it be a little shock? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. At first, but it won't be a shock of like, I, I'm disappointed in you. Yeah. It's a little bit out of the norm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if somebody feeds you a plate that you like to eat with spaghetti, right? And you you like the meat sauce, and all of a sudden you say that's really good. Oh, what? that wasn't meat sauce. That was pig sauce. Yeah, we had pig meat in there. I said, what? Um, it tasted good. It was okay. It right. was out of the norm. I was a little bit shocked by it. Yeah. So I think you know, for my sake, if the girls would do it. it yeah. You know. Yeah. And then what are you guys doing if you found your girls on drugs? That's a tough one. Um. Obviously, try to get them help and figure out why they're they're doing that, you know. And yeah. that's a, that's the biggest thing, right? You always gotta figure out like what's the root cause so you mm -hmm. can fix the problem. But if you just try like, hey, stop, stop, stop. Well, yeah, you know, you're you're almost starting over here, but you need to be go back to um where the issue you know is rising from and right. I'll figure that out and, and then obviously you know be there to work through them, work through it with them. And does one make it better than the other? Um, I mean, fentanyl is really big right now. Um, you know, marijuana is, you know, being legalized all, all over now. 
For me, I uh, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. Yeah. And so 70s was love and peace in the 80s. People could do cocaine on a bar table at a dance club, and it yeah. was not a problem. You know, times have changed on the acceptance of it in club scenes and environments. But it hasn't changed in, in private club scenes or private parties. Yeah. And nothing's changed. I've been I've been to a very a very fancy um uh upscale um uh, what do they call that char- charitable event at yeah. at uh, W Hotel in, in Scottsdale. Uh millionaires in there buying expensive things for charity. Yeah. And you know, and it was at the penthouse suite. I remember going to the bathroom and then as I was going to the bathroom, my daughter was coming back and said, What's wrong? She goes, Dad, I can't go in there. I said, What? She goes, there's a man with two young girls doing cocaine in there. Oh, wow. And she goes, I said, did they offer you? No, no. She goes, I walked in and I walked out. And I said, well, so you can see times haven't changed. Right. It's Maybe some of it's underground, but at, at the end of the day, you can just talk to your children. Listen, man, I grew up in an age where I, I experimented with drugs and I've been clean for forever now, but I was still, I was still curious because uh-huh. children are curious. Yeah. Babies are curious, you know, just like animals are curious. They play with cats or cats play with dogs. I need to understand, let them understand. You're going to be curious about things. One day you'll be in college. One day you'll be at a party. Someone's going to offer you cocaine, marijuana, whatever. You had a rave party. They're going to offer you that rave party pill. Just understand, if you know this ahead of time, I trust your responsibility to know you're doing the right decision. Whether or not your curiosity says, I still want to try it. Well, if you still want to try it, then try things within a matter of degrees. Instead of getting drunk, if you've never drank before, right. have a shot. If you never smoked pot before, yeah. take a little hit. If that's what you want to do. If you've never done cocaine, don't uh-huh. do a big line of cocaine. Taste it with your finger. Something to a degree that makes it safe for you. Okay. But at the end of the day, when people are in, you know, he, you know, he was telling us earlier that you know, crimes of passion. Well, when you do something in a, in a passion mode, everybody's having fun. Hey, they yeah. pass you the plate. You don't think so much. You don't think about what dad told you. You don't yeah. think about what mom told you or church told you or your school teacher told you or your probation officer told you, right? right. Yeah. You just do it. Yeah. You know? And especially, you know, peer pressures, you know, they say peer pressure is the worst pressure. You know, you see everybody else doing it and it looks like they're having a good time. Yeah. It makes it easy, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, I don't know. I wouldn't be okay with it. So it's like I said, you know, I know I experiment with stuff early on and, um, but yeah. man, yeah. Is there anything that your girls can do that, you know, would really upset you? I mean, we've kind of covered, you know, a lot of, you know, important topics, but anything in general, like that you can think of, you like, man, like, okay, like this would, this would really tip the. For me, my, my biggest problem with any of my daughters, uh, uh-huh. Would be a disrespect for somebody else. Okay. Um, I, I'm huge into the mentality that you have to be respectful not only to your kids but to your wife, yeah, to your employer, to your friends. Yeah. So, well, I, if you're my friend, am I going to disrespect you and flirt with your wife? Uh-huh. Okay. If if I'm a ch- if you're I'm a kid, I'm gonna tell my kids you can be disrespectful. You go to the house. This this nice lady prepared you a meal. Yeah. You know you you went and served yourself a big plate, but you eat you know, one ten percent of it and you throw the other ninety percent away. Yeah. It's very disrespectful for the woman who prepared it, respectful for the father who paid for it. Yeah. So, so learn to be respectful in all aspects because that covers everything. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, if you go to church, be respectful. You got a you got a hat on in church, take your hat off. Yeah. If you're going to, you know, a nice dinner with your wife, open the door for her, man. Because yeah. you don't just open the door for your wife when you're dating her because she's beautiful and you want to get into her pants. Yeah. You date your wife because every day she should be your bride and your girlfriend. We open the door for you. Respect her position in your life, right? Yeah. And and no different than if you're going to school. If you go to school and spend the money, be respectful of the other students who are trying to learn. Quit screwing around by playing with your phone or talking yeah. or whispering. How about the teachers getting paid to teach everybody? Yeah. Why are you going to pull away from his, you know, attention span? Yeah. So, I mean, to me, the biggest thing is if, if you can be respectful of that, of everything it's all inclusive of everything right and what do you hope that they achieve in their lifetime for them to be happy with whatever you know they end up um whatever path they end up choosing to go down and yeah. um and hopefully you know they end up with uh, good careers and they're just you know they're in a, in a good place where yeah. um you know I, where they don't have to depend on me so much which at the end of the day you know i, I hope they do you know because i'm pretty handy with 
obviously I work on cars, been working on cars my whole life. So, yeah. you know, as far as all that goes, um, super good with house stuff. You know, I can do plumbing work, house, you know, yeah. electrical work. It, it don't matter. You know, I can do it all. So I would hope that, you know, they would lean on me for stuff like that or advice on it. But um, right. at the end of the day, you know, I want them to be content, you know, strong. And, you know, and I've showed them a lot of stuff, you know, where, um, you know, they can, they can do a lot of stuff on their own. And, um, yeah. and again, they're still very young, but. With having a daughter uh, or daughters, does that change on how you both view women? I, to me, I, I don't because I, my, the woman that taught me about motherhood and, and, and being loving to your family was my mom. Okay. And so I've always, that was my standard. I said earlier, if a child does not have something to, to gauge it against, then it's whatever they find on the streets. I had a very strong mother figure. And so my mom told me, learn how to cook in case your wife doesn't know how to cook. Learn how to keep a clean house because it's important to have a clean house, et cetera. Right? So I, as I, as I, when I got married the first time, I, I, it was never a comparison to my wife, to my mom. Yeah. It was a more of a, how I'm going to treat my wife based on how my dad treated my mom. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So it was never like, okay, I expect my first wife. I want you to be this way because my mom is that way. Mm -hmm. I would never expect somebody to be like my mom. I never expect somebody to be my, like my dad or my brother or my best friend. I want people to be who they are. How I respond to them yeah. and how I respect them and talk to them is how I would have treated my mom. My my pastor once said, we were in church one time, and he says, this com comment is to all you young women out there who are dating men. He said, you go to visit your boyfriend, look at your boyfriend and see how he treats his mom at home. Yeah, How he treats his mom at home is how he's going to treat you. If he treats his mom disrespectfully, Yes, he likes you now, but expect it down the line. Yeah. If he respects and he loves his mom, yeah. he'll be very loving and respectful to you. Okay. Um, do you guys talk to your daughters about birth control? As in my daughter's young, and I really haven't had. I uh, mean, you're getting into that stage, yeah, though. I mean, yeah, yeah. I I have never talked to my kids about birth control, no. you, and 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 either in reference to pills, right, or to condoms. Yeah. I I have spoke to them about the responsibility of sexuality. Yeah, you're responsible to protect your body, and as as in, in sexual situations. Yeah, and part of that responsibility, you're you, the number one. The number one uh, 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 birth control is mentality and responsibility. Yeah, everything else falls a distant second. If you're responsible and you understand, hey. You know, I know better. I just met you. You know, yeah. I'm not going to sleep with you because I could get pregnant and I don't know who you are. Why would I want you to be my baby daddy for? Yeah. So you can talk to them about birth control pills and, and condoms and this is what you do. And, and if, the, if they don't want to work, you can say all that all you want to. What you have to do is just tell them, listen, be responsible for everything you do. Right. Because if you don't, and I said earlier about respect. You also got to respect yourself, man. Yeah, self worth. Respect your yeah. exactly. Respect your self worth. Just because you're attractive and you have your hormones raised, and this person is attractive. And I'm speaking as a girl to a guy. This guy's a hunk, man. He's a high school basketball, whatever. Well, you know what? Use your noodle. Yeah. Don't use the condom, man. Use your noodle. Yeah. Um, what about sex? When you're talking about sex, what is the right age? I guess the right age would probably be, or at least. In the ballpark maybe around like uh you know 12 13 years old because that's yeah. kind of like where you know all the teens um all their hormones start going rampant and stuff and yeah. um and especially the little boys you know there's something else and yeah um, but are you telling them like there's a there's a specific age are you telling them to like are you just trying to like shut it down every time that they're trying to maybe you know mention not necessarily sex but just no i don't i don't think i've shut it down but um just I guess I've tried to have like kind of like light like conversations of it and just be like, um, but it's just something I almost, almost like for me, I don't even know how to almost approach like right. really having a conversation on that because it's like, what's what's the right approach? What's the right advice? You know? Yeah. And I think it's better like for a mother to almost have those conversations with them because, you know, they're, they're a lot more understanding on the female perspective of it over. I kind of have to semi disagree. I think you would have a good point because you can speak on a male perspective being the fact that you know no yeah and because i know i've given them like look i've told them like look boys yeah they dogs. want you know or dogs yeah, yeah you know like 
as far as I'm concerned, ninety probably ninety eight percent of them. You know what I mean? So especially pretty, in high school and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, high school, um, shit, like junior high, everything. You know, yeah. and, um, because I know the way I kind of was, you know, and it was just like, yeah, every girl that smiled my way, I was like, you know, I wanted to get at her kind of thing. So it's just, you know, it's just uh those young hormones that you know out of nowhere like they hit you, and then you're just like, you know, you go from being a kid wanting to, uh, you know, play with toys to now it's just like you know your only interest is females so it's um yeah it's tough. I, I and i would expand on that because um i think if you were to be asking me as as a parent let's right. say your your kids are getting ready to be at that age and that's female or male you say well how did you talk to your kids how should i talk to my kids because i don't know i'm a new parent right or not a new parent but and I've never my, had my that kids talk. my kids yeah. are approaching that age of 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 teenage years where things start to change yeah. physically i would tell that person listen you don't have to be very direct to say listen this sex is going to happen yeah because some kids don't understand the, the very frightness of it yeah what i would do and i would encourage people and my advice would be listen talk to them about something in life like respecting yourself respecting your body i mean somebody else could have a different perspective i mean you know, yeah. i use words respect somebody else could have the different word you know whatever that is that they make fulfills them yeah. But I would say, listen, tell your kids about respecting your body when you do drugs, right? Yeah. You want to grow older? You what? Hey, hey, little Bill, do you want to be a fireman? Well, firemen need to be strong and they need to have strong lungs, you know, to go into the burning place. That means you can't be smoking, okay? Now, if you want to be a fireman, you shouldn't be smoking. Yeah. You know, and, and if you want to be a dancer, well, you need to be able to stay in shape. You want to eat all that chocolate stuff, right? Yeah. You can be very specific but bland with it. You know, and, and when it comes to a parent telling a kid about sex, well, listen, one day this might come around, but just understand, you only have your body once. Yeah. Protect your body. Don't get your body an opportunity to get a sexual disease that might compromise your health in the future. You want kids? Yeah. Well, do you want kids with one person? You want kids with a lot of people. Yeah. But dad just want kids with one person. Okay, well, they be very selective. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because he can, just he, can, he, he can just, you're talking to him about it. Right. But you're not talking to him about it. Yeah. So because a lot of kids, if you try to say, hey, Billy, are you having sex? They're gonna you're gonna catch them off guard. Yeah. And so to me, I was my advice to any parent was listen, be very direct in the conversation. Yeah. But be, be very, very uh vague in a way. Vague, that's a good word. Vague, but talk to in a different term about something that relates to what they're doing. Okay. Because if you come straight at them, yeah. Now I'm sure there's kids out there that can handle it. Yeah. And nowadays, sexuality, because of cell phones. I mean, they can look at Pornhub all the time. They can do whatever they want to, and they probably know a lot more than we do at their age. Yeah, you know, That's unfortunately, well, absolutely, yeah, because yeah, everything's so sexualized nowadays. You know, like it's everywhere. You know, you you can open up an email for something, and then like you know, you get like ads and everything else that yeah. pops up with that kind of stuff. So it's um, you know, it's just definitely different times where like you know a lot of these kids are being exposed to even sexual images at a lot younger age than you know we ever were. You know? Yeah. Hey, Nardo, you know, we had a magazine, you know, like a Playboy magazine <laughs> that somebody stole from their uncle or whatever, you know. And, yeah. uh, so with music, movies, everything is being sexualized, like how you mentioned. How can we spotlight women um, in I mean, a positive you mean, manner? Pete, you, are you talking about women in general or women celebrities? General. Or no, celebrities? Just, just women in general. I mean, every time that you think of a woman, it's sexualized. I feel, in my own opinion. Well, first of all, I understand that if, if, you, if you're referring to a man... Not a woman. If the mm -hmm. question is based to a man, all men by nature will look at a woman at their looks first. Yeah. Even if you're if you look at them to marry them, or if you look at them at a strip bar, if you look at them at a grocery store, first thing you look at is are they attractive? Yeah. Okay. So all of a sudden you're always going to the first thing, which is visual. Right. But Unless you start, you grow up yourself respecting women, and my mom taught me to be respectful of women. The way you look at a person in your office, at a club, at a restaurant, a hostess, a fellow comedian. I've worked with you know female comedians. What I've been you know doing my shows. Yeah, you can't look at them in a sexual way, like oh hey, you're hot man. You know I'm glad I'm performing with you. You don't do that. Yeah, because that's the respect I have myself. Right. I look at them as oh you're a talented musician. You're a talented comedian. Or well, you're a great attorney, you know. Yeah. You, but at the end of the day, if the person comes to you, if it's a female attorney, and she comes in wearing stiletto heels and a, a miniskirt, 
all men, what are you going to do? Wow. Okay. Uh-huh. You know, and so unless you don't have a sexual drive. So, I mean, what, what are you going to do? I think for me, it's like maybe showing them examples of like good professional women, you know, that are dressed well and speak well and all that. And then like yeah. setting that as an example for them, you know, and, um, you know, that's if maybe their mothers can't do that for them. You know, maybe their mom's dressed like, you know. Yeah. Maybe I mean, I feel like it's a lot of pressure we're putting on to women. Bringing up that question because I'm like, man, like if say your daughter wants to be a singer, it's like, oh, like you look at all the singers that are out there. They're, you know, looking at a certain, they look a certain way. Otherwise they don't sell records. Uh, if it's an actor, or an actress, um, same, same set of foot, no matter what category, it just seems like we just keep moving into that. I think if you, if you push one mentality on your children is to avoid pressure uh-huh. because in real, in reality, there's really no, there is no pressure in life. Right. People call it, they can say pure pressure, work pressure. Um, I, I've always said I have a line in my show where I say, you know what? There is really no pressure in life. Really, the only person that ever had pressure in life was a younger brother of Jesus, who was yeah. James. Uh-huh. Okay, why? Because his brother's God. Yeah. How do you, how do you live up to that? Yeah. You know, when you go to bed, who do you say your prayers to? Your brother. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. When you get, when you get up in the morning and your mom makes you breakfast, who do you thank the food for? Your brother. Yeah. So how do you live up to that kind of pressure? Uh-huh. Everything else, anybody else can't have pressure because. Pressure is just a gauge of what it takes to break you down. Right. And so I always tell my girls, never feel pressure. My 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 youngest girl, Haley, she was a musician and she had music on iTunes and she was doing really well into COVID and then she decided to leave it alone. Uh-huh. But for her it was dad, do I how do I compare to these people? Yeah. Should I get better? And I was like, you know what? You cannot put pressure on yourself. Because she goes, Dad, I always feel pressure. I said, No, pressure is just a, a, a gauge of making yourself more tight. Do what you do the best. Yeah. After that, it's up. It's no longer up to you, man. If you're a basketball player and you're shooting free throws for the world championship, you can do, you've been practicing for years and you shoot a jump shot, that free throw shot, it ties it or loses it. All you can do is shoot the ball. Yeah. There is nothing you can do to guide that ball in the air into the hoop. Yeah. And, and difference, same thing with life. You can't, you can be the best daughter in the world and just say, I want to be a musician. Okay. Be the best you can understand there's a lot of things going on yeah but no pressure you know right um how are you reacting if your daughter shows signs of mental abuse or even physical abuse (coughs) man um i've seen the first word that comes to me is anger Uh uh-huh um you know like i mentioned earlier you know like finding the root cause like why is this happening why are you putting yourself in that situation and yeah then, you know, start working on how to get them out of that situation. Right. And, um, you know, just, I guess even then, you know, focus more on building them up, you know, with their self-confidence and self-worth and all that. And, yeah. Okay. My daughter suffers from mental, yeah. uh, from mental um, issues, mental health. Yeah. And so um, one of the reasons I decided to be a comedian was to create a platform and that platform for me is not to go to a club and get a lot of people to clap at me for the sake of me. Look, it's about me. You get all the claps, right? It's about the more visibility I get as a comedian, the bigger the platform might be or the bigger the venue. Right. And the bigger the venue means there's more people coming in, are attending, and know who you are. So that one day there's going to be somebody that shows up at that at that performance you have yeah. who is contemplating suicide who's contemplating jumping over the river, taking their kids with them, right? Right. But for that minute, I can reach out to them and make them laugh. And if I can reach that person who has all that mental issues going on or the mental health, they're going to say, oh, you know what? That joke was funny. It made I actually laughed for the first time in two years. I came here because they told me to show up, have some free drinks. I figured, why not? Free food, free drinks. But I'm laughing now. Yeah. And then they realize, you know what? I guess life can be good. Yeah. So for me, my my whole comedy career is is, is based as, as a platform to be able to reach people. It's like a ministry. Right. And I don't mean in a religious way, but it's a ministry. I go up to say, you know what? My jokes will help you, will heal you. Because that's what I put on my internet website. Yeah. Comedy is healing. Yeah. And if I can reach you and, and you have mental issues, because my daughter did, I'm writing a book about it, you yeah. know? The, the father's perspective of dealing with a child with mental mental health. Okay. And that's why I'm doing it. Yeah. Because 
mental health is no different than a girl who has, you know, messed up periods. Yeah. Right. Or uh, a daughter that can't get pregnant because uh-huh. she's always losing the baby. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a situation in your life where, as a father, you have to try to understand it. And I can read all the books I want to. Right. I'm still learning more about it. Yeah. And I'm still understanding it. She may have an episode, and I'm thinking, okay, I got to deal with this again, or I'm going to deal with this again. Yeah. You understand that? You see the difference? Right. You're just it, trying it, to find it, different Yeah. Am right. I just dealing with this? Okay. Okay. I got to deal with this again. And everything's yeah. always evolving, you know? So you always, you know, you can't, you can never almost have anything completely figured out. You know, right. you always have to kind of stay in that, um, that constant learning mentality, you know? Yeah. And, and adjustments and um like I said especially with like you know so you know with female their hormones with their periods come and go you know they're they you know they're all kind of all over the place so you know some days you know they're like mad for no reason and yeah. you know other times they're nice so it's just like you know you have to be able to i think as males we have to be able to realize that and you know adjust our personalities to kind of right. adjust to you know the way they're feeling at, at that moment yeah do you guys have any discretions on same-sex relationships me, I mean, I, when I was a lot younger, I didn't believe, I guess, that people really were gay. Yeah. And I thought it was just like maybe they're going through some stuff and um, maybe they think they want to be with the same sex for some reason. But yeah. um, I think as I've gotten older, I've like, come to realize I think people are born that way. And um, I mean, if that's if that's a path they, they choose to take, um, yeah. you know, it is what it is. You know, in the end of the day, as long as, you know, they're happy and they're not... Um, and in a lot of that, in a lot of those issues, you know, they're more socially accessible than than they ever were. So, you know, back in the day, you know, a lot of people probably, you know, hit it, and um, but now that it's just a lot more open, and right, you know, it's okay because I think that can cause mental health issues with you know when they're trying to hide stuff like that. And right. So I, I mean, I don't know. I guess I'd I'd, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. Uh, my my my, uh, I'm blessed with five girls and and a few who have crossed over for relationships. Yeah. And um, initially my first child was that way. I'm sorry, my last child was that way years ago. And I grew up, you understand, I grew up in a very conventional background. Yeah. I grew up as a ministerial student going to Bible school. Okay. So it was always sodomy and, and Gomorrah and this is what you don't do. But I've, I've always been a flexible person. So when my daughter told me that she was, at first I was a little you know pushy yeah. against it like you know you can do better you know i i try to guide her back to where i wanted her to yeah and what i realized i may be guiding you back to where i want you to be and let's say you listen to me and yeah. stop dating this girl that you're seeing okay so i got what i wanted but did you get what you want yeah. exactly and so it's not about me it's it, it, so at first it was a little bit of a shock because uh-huh. how i grew up yeah but understand nowadays parents and, and let's say millennial parents uh-huh. who are now having kids who have been exposed to it, they may say, I'm fine with my daughter having a girlfriend or my, my son having a boyfriend. Yeah. It's the mentality, it's how you brought up. But at the end of the day, you have to understand that if your daughter says, Hey dad, I'm I, I'm lesbian or bisexual yeah. or asexual or whatever the term they use nowadays, all right, you want to talk to me about it? Is this something you want to talk about or are you just telling me? Because you have to have a conversation to them on their level, not yours. Right. Because if you do, then I'm preaching to you. I want you to live as I as I feel is right, not how you want to feel. Right. At the end of the day, man, if if at the end of the day, when all things are said and done and, and the day of judgment comes, if this is how things are, then you're going to respond to God. I'm going to respond to God. Yeah. If things aren't what people are made to be and there is no judgment day, yeah. okay, well, then all this was for naught. But at the end of the day, you have to make that own decision. Yeah. My job as a parent, unless my child says, look, I like to kill people yeah. and maim people. I want to rob a bank. That's a different story. You're right. But if they say, hey, guess what? I want to do this. Then the reality is it's whatever they want to do. You have to support them. You don't support them. They'll find somebody else that supports them. Yeah. And then the next time when something happens that critical in their life. Right. And they don't come to you. Understand why. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Um. There's nothing in the world that's more underrated than a good parent, especially in a world where so many men are absent. It seems that our society has gotten used to giving all men a bad rap for their absentee fathers just out there, that we forget to give thanks and praise to the good men who actually embrace being a dad. 
Um, every show I like to give out some stats, you know, facts or whatever the case is. Um, I wanted to read four girl dad stats to show how important your guys' roles are. Girls without fathers are more likely to become sexually active at a younger age and have a child outside of marriage. Girls who live with their dads do better in school. Men who grew up with absentee fathers were more likely to become absentee fathers. They also found that women who grew up with absent fathers are more likely to have children with absent fathers. And the infant mortality rates are 1.8 times higher for infants of unmarried mothers than for, than for married mothers compared to pregnant women with, without father support. Pregnant women with father support experience a lower prevalence of pregnancy loss, 22% compared to 48%, allowing new fathers to be involved in caring for their child in the first days of a child's life. Um, that can be a positive long-term benefit. So with this next segment, um, it's now time for the know, the O, and the laugh. It's where this and every show we give out a random hack, Nobody's fun fact, know. or a message, and a oh. joke. The hack for today is this. Keep rubber bands on the bathroom door. Recreate the genius baby-proofing cabinet door hack on any door you don't want to be locked. Whether that's a bathroom door on your child's own bedroom door, place an rubber band on both the inside door knob and the outside knob, making an X that holds the latch inside the door. will keep the kids from accidentally locking themselves in or out of the, of the room. Today's message is, fathers, be your daughter's first love so she doesn't settle for any under-ordinary love. So that the bar is held high, not materialistic, but healthy high. Your job is not to teach them how to be a lady, but rather how they should be treated. And fathers, don't blame your daughters for the road they're on. That's their own asphalt. Do you get it? That's the kind of the joke. I know it's a dry joke, but it says, don't blame your daughters for the road they're on. That's their own asphalt. And as we wrap up the show, I want to give a huge, huge, huge shout out to today's guest, Nick Madrid. Where can they find you at? Uh, you can find me on Nick Madrid Instagram, Nick Madrid Comedy, and Nick Madrid Comedy on Facebook. Okay. When's your next show? My next show is next Tuesday. Okay. Where's that at? the House of Comedy. Okay. I, I put on my shows on my Instagram page and okay. on my Facebook page. I am working on a website to promote my my comedy yeah and so that's in the works but for now uh the majority of my of the people that follow me are on instagram nice nice right. and, and follow him you know support um one of the big things that i'm always trying to push is to support local and go out there check out a show um he really is funny and everything else and do you have your book done yet my book my book is halfway done okay what do you have a timeline when that's going to come out it just depends on how busy I am with my comedy because I spend a lot of time writing my material for comedy and rehearsing. Okay. So I've been working on that for like a year, year and a half. Yeah. I'm halfway through it and I, I don't want to rush through it just to finish it. Right. So when I feel the need to write into it, because sometimes it's emotional. Yeah. And I feel the emotionality that I need to do this. So I start to work on it. Okay. And then if nothing, if I if I go blank, then I leave it, I'll leave it alone. I mean, so I really don't put it a time level. I'm, I'm going to guess by the end of probably... Maybe next next May or June, I should be yeah. done with it. Okay, just stay tuned. Yeah, when he yeah. puts it out, you know, please support. Um, and our guest, uh, our returning guest, Juan Mesas. Where can they find you at? It's a mess on that mess. I I messed it up last time too. I kept going over and I'm like, Juan Mesa. Yeah, Juan Mesa. There we go. Where can they find you at? Um, Instagram, I believe, is like J Mesa underscore one, and then Facebook, my name Juan Mesa M E Z A, and um, that's about it. Okay, cool. And Mr. Habari Live himself, Mr. Dip, please like and follow Habari Live podcast, Habari Entertainment, and check out other shows on there like Habari Live, Wealth for Generations, and Socially Awkward and a Comfortable Podcast. Please also check out One Love on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Stay safe out there, stay hydrated, and make it a great day, and we're out.